Alright, another recap or another update I guess here for you. Um, what I'm finding is as the fire varies, uh, when you throw your coal in, it kind of cools down the fire a little bit. And because I have such terrible coal, I'm finding fluctuation in the heat. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's still it's still holding us 50 degrees or whatnot. Um, but I'm not getting this rapid air movement that I really need. Uh, right now, I don't even know. I should have my wind meter out here, my anemometer. But uh, it's not blowing my hat off by any means. And we do have the sunlight on and off. It's not direct sunlight, but it is enough to brighten it up a little bit in here. And then it kind of goes away. It's kind of one of those days. But our temperature is fluctuating. Uh, it's been down to uh, 13 degrees. It's kind of on the climb right now a little bit, but the sun is poking through. It's minus 18 out, and it's plus 14 in here. That's on the warm end of the greenhouse. On this end of the greenhouse, we're down to about the 12, I'd say, or maybe 13 there. Got another one over here. It's showing 11 degrees. So what I've decided to do is to go ahead with the uh, the heat exchanging water unit as well. Now, uh, like I, I do want to bring a 45 gallon drum in here and this is not a big greenhouse so what I'll have to do is uh, clean out this little spot here and uh, if anyone's wondering that is a solar water heater. Another project. Um, anyway, I'll be able to roll a 45 gallon drum in here or I hope to be able to roll it in here on its side. And uh, what I do is uh, I just pick up these cheap pond pumps. Uh, I have a lot of aquaponics and I also have a, a fairly large uh, fish pond with waterfall in that. So I tend to have a lot of these pumps on hand. Um, and actually I'd like to do a video on my, uh, now that I'm thinking of that, I'd like to do another video if anyone's interested on my uh, waterfall and pond system. Uh, and we, we're going to use it this this year to drive our aquaponic system. We used to have fish here in the greenhouse, but now we're the water out in the pond is just amazing. So anyway, off topic. Uh, I'm going to use this pond pump, and I'm just going to use this this uh, five gallon pail to start with here because we're not ready to fire up the greenhouse. We're just testing all this. So what we'll do is we'll test it in a pail of five gallon or a five gallon pail of water. So we're going to basically drop this pump in the water and it will feed through this heater hose type hose here, unpressurized and it'll go over to the, uh, the coal burner and in the coal burner, right coming before the chimney there's a collector there and we are going to go out and drill some holes to accommodate the inlet, which is the bottom and the outlet, which is the top um, when I wind these, you'll notice it's at uh, different wrap sizes. Uh, the reason I do that is when you put it in a chimney, if you do it all the same size, it kind of gums up on you with soot. So this way here, it kind of lets the air flow. I, I could maybe unravel a little bit more of it, but I found that this works. It will build up if you, if you run a real sooty uh, burn. Um, the reason this is real sooty is I had it in an oil burner and the oil burner at that time was not a real perfected thing for me and it was it was getting sooty but makes excellent hot water now what happens is it'll go in at whatever temperature it doesn't matter and when it comes out it'll generally come out you know 15 20 degrees warmer depending on your heat supply I've got hundred and ten degrees Celsius at my uh, collector there before my chimney so what it'll do is it may come in at, at uh, 20 degrees and exit at 25 but then it dumps it into the pail and then it recirculates it and then just slowly but surely the pail will get warmer now I'm hoping that'll help take the spikes off of our temperature in here and secondly in bigger volumes once the furnace runs out of fuel overnight the water will continue to heat so it, it, the nice thing about this is the heat that I'm targeting here with this coil is wasted heat anyway. It goes out the chimney. So uh, it's kind of a win-win. You're just extracting more energy from the fire uh, and there's plenty to go around there. 
So uh, I'm going to go out there. The furnace is running right now, so I'm going to have to do it with uh, with uh, the exhaust blowing in my face. It's going to be lovely. Um, can't wait. But I will get it in there, and I will show you. Um, uh, maybe once I get everything hooked up, I'll just give you a quick recap of that, and then we'll do maybe some performance on it. All right, thanks. All right, here we are again. Now you can see I've got my pail set up here. I measured out four gallons of water into it. Uh, pond pump is down in the bottom there. I've actually held the pond pump back. It's got a little dial on it um, to uh, to slow the flow down a little bit, so we can take a little bit more heat into the water. Uh, fire's not raging right now. We're shooting. We're sitting on uh, 48, 49 degrees up in the air duct there. Here we've got. 18, 19 degrees there. That's on the outlet. And on the inlet, we have about 13, 12, 13 degrees. So you can see it's not a, a major, major uh, heat transfer, but in time it's going to heat this water up. And it just so happens that my fan, the second part of my blower fan here, is actually blowing on the pail, which would help circulate the heat from the pail. I don't generally think you need to blow a fan on them and uh, this is just the test. Uh, I didn't want to fill up a 45 gallon drum in here but I would I would think within you know eight or ten hours the, the temperature of the pail would definitely increase. Uh, we're sitting at 11 or 12 degrees on the pail right now and our inlet temperature it's showing about 15, 14 right now. I just uh, stirred up the fire a little bit there, so it might be might take a little bit while, a little bit longer to get some good heat back. But uh, anyway, um, maybe I'll just pop you outside and you can have a look at. Uh, there's not a lot to see, I guess, but uh, I just uh, put my heating coil right in this area here. You can actually hear that water almost boiling in there. You can hear it transferring anyway. That's the output line. I always put it on the top and then my drain line or my lower line comes through here and just into the greenhouse. I should probably insulate those. Uh, don't have a real rager of a fire going there. Oh, she's starting up now here. I just opened up the air a little bit to her and opened up the draft a little bit. So uh, it won't be too long. I just threw some wet coal on her there. Lovely looking stuff. And uh, that's kind of our secondary heat source off the seam burner system. I might slow that water down a little bit more to get a little bit more temperature on it, but I'll keep an eye on her here and see how she does. All right, out for now. Okay, uh, went into the house, got a coffee right there. When I left the pail, was it 12 and a half, 13 degrees? Now we're at 16.7 and you'll notice the water keeps getting warmer on this pipe because the water going in so we got 20 degrees there we've got 15 degrees here so we've got about a five degree difference every time the water goes through it accumulates five degrees now this is only four gallons and it's been about 10 minutes I'd say so uh, calculating a 45 gallon drum uh, it's going to obviously take considerably longer, but uh, one thing you do have to to uh, make sure is that the water doesn't get so hot that the pond pump can't handle it. So uh, I'm going to keep monitoring this here. What I need to know is uh, I could put a 45 gallon drum in here, I just may not be able to fill it completely full. And the other problem too is I need a way to, to shut my pump down at a certain time I'd have to put it on a timer so that it isn't circulating the heat outside after the heat is is gone because then that same heating system works as a cooling system now uh, that would mean I'd have to drain my lines back so that it the, the lines run back and drain out so they don't freeze up either so I guess it can get a little complicated but uh, Maybe it's just a matter of coming out here every evening or whatever and uh, or in the morning or whatever intending to it. I don't think it frees up in eight hours with the heat generated in the greenhouse anyway. So even if it did circulate, it would just take some temperature off the water. 
it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be freezing up on us I don't think I just wanted to make a quick note um, when you have your heat coil out in the in the furnace if your furnace is running and you turn your pump on just make sure that this hose is tied up and pointing in a safe direction because when that water goes through there initially it will make steam and it's a good way to uh, give yourself a facelift so I just wanted to mention that for safety's sake uh, just just be aware that uh, it could sh send out a shot of steam on you and uh, the results could be uh, could be uh, something you're not after so there. Yeah.